School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of the meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas uh, Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Uh, leading us in our invocation will be uh, Mr. Gerald Irons, and in our Pledge of Allegiance will be uh, Mr. Bruce Tuff. Let's stand. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and for this great accomplishments of our school district. We thank you for all of our graduating seniors. We pray that they continue their success and they pursue their life's dreams and ambitions and that they will apply what they have learned. We thank you for the productive five years that Bruce Tuff has spent serving our district. We wish him continued success as he moves on to other community commitments. Continue to bless our board and the many judicious decisions we make, and we pray that our district's accomplishments will be continued in, in the future. As I close, please be with uh, Senator Ted Kennedy and his family every minute and every second as he fights for his life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, can I have my girls come forward to help me with the pledge? Come up. They do this every morning, so I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please join me as we honor our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, our state flag. On the Texas, Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, 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 one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Irons, and thank you, Tough Clan. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Irons. You're welcome. Okay, uh, agenda item 2A, uh, Dr. Stockton. Uh, with your permission, Dr. Brown, I'd like <laughs> to skip to 2B. Uh, we have uh, someone who's going to be recognized under 2A on their way. Okay. So if it's okay, we'll skip to special district recognition. We're excited tonight to recognize the top two graduates of each school. And here to introduce the, those uh, very special young people is Mrs. <laughs> Drummond. Good evening, Dr. Brown, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. Each year, the high schools in Conroe Independent School District select the top two ranking students of their graduating class. This is determined by the highest two grade point averages at the end of the third marking period of the senior year. The grade point averages are weighted dependent on the level of rigor of the courses taken throughout their high school careers. Students will be recognized for attaining the honor of being one of the top two graduates of their senior class. And tonight we have Dr. Ann Snyder helping us with our awards. And we're going to, I would like to recognize the high school principals as we do this. From Hawk Alternative High School, the principal is Joanne Bacon. And our honorees are Jonathan David Swift. <laughs> and as you come up, <laughs> Kiera Chantel Ratcliffe. <laughs> From Caney Creek High School, the principal is Mrs. Trish McClure, and we are honoring Kaylee Michelle Carter. We're also honoring Stephanie Deep Wynn. <laughs> From Conroe High School, our principal is Mr. Mike Crowell. We also have with us Dr. Mary Jo Parker from the Academy of Science and Health Professions. We are honoring Jamie Neville. We 
are also honoring Lathan Henderson. Our principal of Oak Ridge High School is Mr. Tommy Johnson. Our honorees are Erica Winterer. Brittany Wyman. The Woodlands College Park High School, Principal Mark Merrill and Dr. Susan Caffrey from the Academy of Science and Technology. Adam Wynn. <laughs> William Bender. <laughs> From the Woodlands High School, Principal Greg Colshan. Our honorees are Yafe Oyang. and Adriana Carolina Gamboa Ayala. <laughs> Students, we want to also recognize your parents because we know that without them, a lot of things would not have happened. You wouldn't be here for one. So if you're a parent of these students, would you please stand and let us recognize you for <laughs> your perseverance. Dr. Snyder, did you want to say something? On behalf of uh, the Board of Trustees and uh, Dr. Stockton, it is with great pleasure to recognize each of you this evening. Uh, your academic excellence is to be applauded, and um, we are so excited um, for your future endeavors. I think it might be interesting to not only the board members uh, and administration, but also to the audience to share what your plans are um, with regard to furthering your education. And you want to go ahead and start? Uh, start, Ms. Hiyala, with you. Uh, turn around and uh, know the board, and Dr. Stockton would like to um, shake hands. <laughs> and congratulations to each of you. Congratulations, great job. Congratulations, great job. Thank you. Congratulations, great job. Congratulations, great job. Nicely done, Dr. Snyder. Thank you, John. Thank you. I'm glad I hit you right. I'm glad I hit you right. Okay, uh, Dr. Stockton, assuming that A is not here, let's move on to 2C. Uh, 
Uh, okay, if I could have your attention, please, we'll move uh, on to 2C. Uh, and those of you who came just for that, if you feel feel free, don't feel like you have to stay for the whole thing, thing feel free to leave. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Give him just a minute. No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I thought I was loud mouth enough, Dr. Hines. Okay, Dr. Stockton. Okay, we're going to skip down to 2C. We're still waiting on one of our recipients uh, for the Arbor Day Awards. Uh, 2C, we have, a, uh, I believe, a first in our school district. And here to uh, introduce our recipient is Mr. Mark Merrill, principal of the Woodlands College Park High School. Mr. Merrill. <clears throat> Dr. Brown, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton, it is with great pleasure that I stand before you tonight to recognize the Woodlands College Park High School's first state champion, Heather Steinbauer. Heather is the daughter of Mark and Lisa Steinbauer and coached by Henry Garza. <coughs> Heather is on our varsity tennis team playing in the number one spot throughout the year and compiled a 34-1 record. During district play, she did not lose a game, and during regional and state tournament, she only lost one set. She is currently ranked 23rd in the nation and number one in Texas. Heather captured the 5A State Girls Tennis Singles title a few weeks ago, becoming the first state champion in College Park School history. Heather will be attending Vanderbilt University in the fall on a full athletic scholarship. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Heather Steinbauer and Coach Henry Garza. Well, this is, uh, this is quite a distinction for our school district, and, and we are very honored at your accomplishment, Heather. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we want to recognize you, Heather Steinbauer, <coughs> Woodlands College Park High School, 2008 State Champion UIL Class 5A Girls Tennis Singles. Congratulations. <laughs> Bruce, are her parents in the audience? Yes. Uh, is Mark and Lisa here? Lisa, hi. Please stand. Behind every successful state champion is a great mother. <laughs> I, I was called uh, by Lisa Garrison, and she said, make sure that, uh, that I mentioned that uh, Heather went through Lamar. Uh, Gerald, <laughs> and uh, and then went to the Tedis Academy. But you did you go through Wilkerson as well, and 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 Knox. So and then came back, came back in her true feeder zone to go to College Park. And uh, why don't you come up here and tell us where your college plans are, uh, what you plan on doing, and why you lost a few games in that final <laughs> set? I, I can't believe it. Yeah, the one loss. Come. <laughs> Please, please, Heather, please come up. Are you, you doing there or over here? Are you saying it's the coach's fault? Why did you lose it? Why you lost? Was it? Well, I didn't know how many you lost. You lost a few games in that final set. I know you took straight sets in the in all of them. You took straight sets, but I think. How did that happen? <laughs> okay, blame it on the coach. Well, once again, we want to congratulate Heather and Coach Garza. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Great job. Congratulations. 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 Congratul
um, for an incredible accomplishment. Here to introduce our recipient is Mr. Greg Colshan, principal of the Women's High School. Dr. Brown, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it is with great pleasure that I stand before you to introduce uh, a very special young lady and her coach. Um, you know, it's not very often that you get an opportunity to win a state championship, but to do it as a sophomore with the opportunity to come back two more times and do it is quite a special accomplishment. So this time I'd like to introduce our head girls track coach, Noel Hansen, who will introduce our champion. I have a lot of things I'd like to say about Sarah, but we'll try to keep it brief. But, you know, Sarah it really had a wonderful uh, cross-country season uh, and we did a lot of wonderful things. And unfortunately for her, her probably worst meet of the year was a state meet where, and I would say worst, I think she, she fell down at the start and got back up. And I think she had a top 20 finish. But she kind of, I think, used that as a bit of motivation going into track season. And we have a, a fairly storied track program. And, she came in from the get-go and ran the fastest time in the state in a practice meet and was able to back that time up uh, numerous times throughout the season. She went on to district, won the district championship in the mile and the two-mile, went on to regionals and won both those uh, mile and two-mile championships, went on to state uh, two Saturdays ago and, and won the state championship running 10.42 and having won by about nine seconds over her closest competitor. She had a great season. Uh, she's a wonderful person to work with. Came back later that evening and, and got third in the mile. But uh, it's just kind of a, a great story of uh, working hard, setting great goals, and then being able to accomplish it. And I feel very, very fortunate to uh, get to coach Sarah and, and be around her. And she's a wonderful teammate as well. So I don't know what else I can say about her. Just a, just a great person, Sarah Andrews. Coach, we'd also like to thank you for uh, all you do for children, and, and we appreciate you as well. But Sarah, this is your night, and uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and Dr. Stockton, we'd like to recognize you, Sarah Andrews, the Woodlands High School 2008 State Champion, UIL Class 5A Girls Track 3,200-meter run. And before I get – why don't you come over here? Oh, oh, and let me give you – Congratulations. I just have a, a a favor that Dr. Stockton asked me to ask you. He's been, you know, trying to tune up his running a little bit, and <laughs> he would like to meet you wherever you start this summer and run with you, or at least for the first hundred yards or so. <laughs> so, could you let him know when you go by to shake everybody's hand where exactly you start? Uh, we, we're not interested in where you finish because uh, we're not. I'm just going to stay with you unless we have a golf cart, but we congratulate you, ma'am. <laughs> also, we'd like to recognize her parents tonight. If you'd stand, please. Congratulations, Coach. Great job. Well done. Yeah. Congratulations. 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 Man, well, that's awesome. Sarah. Congratulations. Thank you for all you do. Congratulations. Up to and out running. Congratulations. Did you want to say a few words? <laughs> Please. And my apologies for not asking you to. <laughs> Um, well, I'd just like to thank my mom and coach um, and my dad, too, who's not here. But um, they've just done so much work this season to get me where I'm where I'm at right now, um, and I just couldn't have done it without them. So um, I'm just blessed to have such a good family and coach. So. Dr. Stockton, 2E. We are actually ready for 2A. Oh, we are? Okay, then let's go to 2A. 2A is our special district recognition um, for some very <coughs> special younger students. And Dr. Kathy Gibson is here to introduce those students. 
Dr. Brown, board members, and Dr. Stockton, we have seven very um, outstanding intermediate school students that we'd like to introduce to you this evening. Our school district has participated in the Montgomery County Beautification Association Arbor Day Poster Contest for, for many, many years. This year, we had our fifth graders um, competed against 1,510 posters, and 23 schools in Montgomery County participated. And for lack of a better phrase, we swept the contest. <laughs> uh, I would like to introduce to you, we have seven winners. One area winner, which is Eric Cruz Segovia from Travis Intermediate, Principal Mrs. Jean Angelorio. Eric, would you come forward, please? We have Gavin Johnson from Derrichin Elementary, and Gavin could not be with us this evening. His principal is Mrs. Debbie Jones. area winner was Brooke McDougall from Wilkerson Intermediate, Principal Mrs. Marie Hartley. And our fourth area winner is Ashley Ortiz from Vogel Intermediate, Mr. Ken Sharples, Principal, and Ashlyn could not be with us this evening. Then we have Mr. Ignacio Garcia, who not only was an area winner, but was also a regional winner from Tuff Elementary, Mrs. Julie English Principal. <laughs> and we have Mrs. Car Ms. Karina Rivera from Mitchell Intermediate, Principal Mrs. Paula Klepeski. And last but not least, we have a very uh, outstanding young gentleman from Grangerland Intermediate who swept the entire state with his original piece of artwork, Mr. Michael Epinet, who was an area regional and is the Texas state winner. On behalf of our Board of Trustees and Dr. Stockton, I want to congratulate all of you. As fifth graders, you really set the bar high, and we know that you're going to be very successful in CISDs, but you represent our district very well, and we congratulate you. Will all the parents of the students here, if you're here tonight, please stand so we can give you a hand. We attribute all of your success to your parents and to the dedication that they uh, instill in you. Congratulations, and would you please start with Dr. Stockton and shake our hands. Thank you. Thank you for making us so well proud. Done. Wow. Thank so you so Christy. much for making us so proud. You, you well teach me to grow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Still young man. Yeah. I don't think you're yeah. right. Congratulations. 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 Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. And if I. If we wanted to see that artwork, where would we see it? If we wanted to see that art piece of artwork, the original right now is in Nebraska, and it will compete against the nation. Okay. There were three prints made. One you could see at Wood Forest Bank uh, on, on Davis. Uh, one is, will be on, is on display at Grangerland Intermediate, and the third print belongs to the Epinet family. <laughs> Okay, uh, Dr. Stockton, 2E. 2E, we're here to recognize uh, some very special employees in our school district, and our first set of recognitions are going to be introduced by uh, Debbie Zamanik. <coughs> Dr. 
Dr. Brown, Dr. Stockton, and the board. It is just a thrill for me to be here to introduce the four outstanding managers that we have, and they were selected from uh, four regions in our district. They strive for excellence, each one of these. They were selected because they had error-free food production reports, 100% on their uh, health inspections. Their participations all increased, and they kept their inventory and their budgets in line. So they were definitely uh, outstanding for us. So we would like to recognize them. We do have some awards going on in other schools in the district, so some of our uh, award winners will not be here. But we have either their supervisor or their manager accepting it for them. So uh, the first one is Tammy Long. She's from Tuff. Juanita Seidel, who is at another award ceremony, and uh, her supervisor, Karen Pugh, will accept it for her. Barbara Poppenhusen from Travis. And Annette Breed from Conroe High. We also have four associates that we would like to recognize. And these employees were chosen because of their willingness to go that extra mile. They would take on another associate's job if that associate was absent. They had no problems <laughs> help training associates when they came in new. And they were always ready to be supportive of anything new that we were trying. And that was a lot. And they always had the customers feel special. So these were the ladies that were out there on the line and uh, greeting our customers every day. And they were absolutely outstanding. Uh, the first one we'd like to recognize is Rhonda Finley from the Woodlands High School. And her supervisor, her manager, Wanda Gorski, will accept for her. Joyce Tigner from Vogel. <laughs> Frances Sayon, she's from Hawk. <laughs> Shelly Boniface from Caney Creek, and she will be uh, receiving her award through her manager, Alita Rushing. She also is at an award ceremony. Well, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and Dr. Stockton, I can't tell you how proud we are of all of you, and thank you for your service and your contribution to our students and staff each and every day. I know that your service and your smiling faces make a difference each day, so thank you so much. Thank you Thank you for the good job. Thank you for congratulations. Thank you, Congratulations. Uh, Dr. Stockton, 2F. 2F, uh, again, we are going to recognize a very special group of people, and here to introduce those recipients is Sam Davila. Sam? Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it is my distinct pleasure to be able to introduce to you today a, a wonderful group of people that are really the backbone of transportation that has allowed us to, to do the jobs we do to get to get uh, all of our students, faculty members, and uh, kids to uh, activities, to school, and back home again safely. Um, 
the way, the way we selected these individuals, I talked with the managers and uh, asked them how, you know, who is out there that's going the extra mile for transportation. And they provided me a list of names, and we reviewed the names and uh, actually came up with these. Uh, it's a small group of people, but uh, like I said, very effective in what they do. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Jeannie Lichtenstein from South County. She's a trainer. David Duzot, he's our assistant shop foreman for North County. He was a mechanic and recently promoted. <laughs> Tammy Luzier, she's a standby for our Woodland Center. <laughs> Kay Breidenthal, she's our field trip coordinator and she coordinates all the trips in the district. Kent Meinhardt, he's not able to be here today, but Ms. Tawana Salinas, his manager, will accept the award on his behalf. <laughs> Wanda Weinzettel, she's our East County, or one of our East <laughs> County monitors. <laughs> Herman Reese, he is one of our Oak Ridge Transportation Center standby monitors, uh, standby drivers, sorry. He does it all. And Shirley O'Neill, she's one of our standby monitors for North County. <laughs> There's such a wide variety of things these folks do. And like I said, everything from helping students get to school safely to helping each other out. Uh, they help each other. They do fundraisers whenever another driver is in need or a monitor uh, is hurting. They visit each other in the hospital. There's so much that they do for each other, and I can't thank them enough. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks for a good job. Well Congratulations. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for making us look fun. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you for a good job. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 <laughs> okay. Congratulations again. Okay. You just call and Okay, before before the Okay. Uh Doc Stockton, I think I'm gonna handle this next one myself. Let me let's let them put this on the agenda anyway. <laughs> huh? Let's put this on the agenda. Okay, we have a, uh, members of the board, we have a resolution uh, honoring uh, Mr. Tuff. I'd like to read it, and then we'll uh, ask for a motion in a second. Uh, a resolution to the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees recognizing Bruce C. Tuff, J.D., outgoing member of the board, for his contributions to the Conroe Independent School District. Whereas, Bruce Tuff has provided five years of service on the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees, serving the children and patrons of the Conroe Independent School District. Whereas, Bruce Tuff has served as Vice and Second Vice President of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees. Whereas, Bruce Tuff has devoted hundreds of hours of his time volunteering for numerous Conroe ISD academic and extracurricular athletic activities. Whereas Bruce Tuff has been a strong community leader, having, in, uh, pardon me, having expressed invaluable support to the patrons and so students of the Conroe ISD, and whereas Bruce Tuff has made a significant impact on the education of Conroe ISD students, now therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Conroe Independent School District recognize and thank Bruce Tuff for his contributions to the students parents, 
staff, and constituents of the Conroe ISD and wishing him well in future endeavors. And hopefully it's going to be passed and approved this 20th day of May 2008. <laughs> so okay, I have a motion. Second. Is there a second? A second. Second by Dr. Snyder. Uh, all those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, nay. <laughs> Well, thank you. You know, the last time, well, I did hear Joby when Joby left. I was going to say the last time that we did this, it was Rob Eisler, and I took Rob's seat, but Joby has also left, and then I forgot Alan as well. But I, I want to say a few words, and I, and I had not prepared anything, but I was sitting here at the meeting, and then I realized I can't believe I'm leaving this. That's what's really shocking to me. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this, which uh something that I enjoy so very much um, and invested so much time in and it means so much to me and then my young kids who are in the district. So I, th I thought what I would do is I'd write something down because I, I think it's good that I say this because it's kind of a reflection back on the history of my service and it's also a reminder of where our district was and, and where it's come to today. Uh, when I was elected in 2003, it during the election, in fact, I, I'll relate a story. Rob said you ought to run for the school board, Rob Eisler, who uh, held my seat. And he said the school district is in great shape. We have no problems. Uh, the uh, There's money in the bank. There's no lawsuits. And we have a great leader in, in our superintendent. And so during this uh, during this two-month period, I mean, it was like the wheels were coming off the school bus. I mean, it was we were in the front page headline uh, about every – uh, every week in the newspaper. And when I got elected, um, uh, Dr. Snyder called me and called me either Saturday or Sunday and said, oh, by the way, uh, you're starting on Tuesday. So not only did we, did I get elected on Saturday, I was starting a month early. And uh, that month, I think we met eight times. Um, all the meetings, uh, Mel and I made a count, and I forgot the count, but during that first year that we served, and it was almost a six months, we added up that we had already put in our three years of service. So it was that many meetings we had. Um, the uh, the first meeting we had, I, I almost feel like I need to apologize to some of the administration. It, it was uh, it was hard because I'd heard a lot of things in the press, and I was and I did not uh, have the opportunity to meet the people in our district, which are all great, wonderful people. And so I had some preconceived notions and beliefs. And uh, one, I think it was Darren Rice's first meeting that he had, and I made the motion not to approve any expenditures. Where is Darren? Is he still there? He is right there. You remember that meeting, Darren? <laughs> So, uh, and it just, it kind of went downhill from there. But, um, it, uh, you know what happens is you learn on the job, and I did. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about education. Education is extremely complicated, and it's extremely challenging. And although I felt like I had read a lot, it didn't prepare me at all for the experience of serving on the school board. Um, to where have we gone from here? Um, the administration, uh, I think the most significant accomplishment, I wrote some of them down, but the number one and the most significant accomplishment that I can say I took part of is when we were interviewing the superintendent candidates and we had a list of candidates and I looked at all of them and as we went through the process and I was interviewing the candidates and uh, we were, in fact, I remember going through one interview with one candidate about a salary and she said that you know, she wouldn't come to this district unless she was paid so much money and had a 7-0 vote. And I said, why would you disqualify yourself like that? Because I'm not voting for that salary. And, she, and you know, it, it was kind of like that period. But I talked to Dr. Stockton. I said, why aren't you a candidate for superintendent? Because I always look at who we have in place now and measure to that. And none of the candidates that I'd interviewed or even looked at measured or compared to Dr. Stockton. And uh, fortunately... 
the whole board also felt that way, and Dr. Stockton was hired as our superintendent. And uh, that was in 2003, and that was within months of of um, me being elected as trustee. Uh, since then, uh, the whole administration has changed. At that time, we had Dr. Stockton, we had Gene, and uh, it was uh, it was a significant significant change. Kathy was at Aldine, and Chris was at Oak Ridge, and Gail was at Knox, and uh, we had our human resource department in, but that just to tell you what kind of transformation and change uh, has occurred. Also, the principals at our school, uh, all of our schools and our leadership, uh, you've seen that quality and that improvement and that change, and that's attributed towards Dr. Stockton and the leadership. And I and I really feel that that is my most proudest accomplishment in selecting Dr. Stockton as uh, superintendent and participating in that. Other areas that I wanted to address that I felt were needed um, in the school district that we we had not looked at and I had conversations with Dr. Stockton in the car and you know this is how when we drive up to graduation then I'd have my opportunity to share all of these wonderful ideas with uh, Dr. Stockton and and it, it's amazing uh, that after those car rides and all of a sudden I would see items appearing on the agenda and he was implementing the good ideas, not all of them, but he would implement the good ideas. And that's the quality of, of a great leader uh, in Dr. Stockton and what it is to be a board member. A board member really comes up with the policy. And fortunately, you have a strong executive in Dr. Stockton who recognizes what's a good policy and a bad policy. And those good ones he implemented. Uh, such as the changing of the salaries of the teachers, realigning those. And I made that a priority, and I talked to Dr. Stockton about it. He says, we're going to get it done, and we did. We realigned all the salaries, increased our salary uh, salaries for our teachers, and made our district more competitive. Our audit committee, we started an audit committee, internal audit committee, which is like none of the other districts did it. Why should we do it? Well, it's now mandated by the legislature, and we did it years and years before the uh, legislature even required that to be done. So we had an internal audit committee, and we've audited our construction department. We've audited uh, the Moorhead Stadium and the cash receipts, all of our activity funds. I mean, these are all things that we implemented during this period of time that just makes us very distinct and separate from the rest of the districts. Um, our special needs programs, which was going through a massive amount of lawsuits and a lot of scrutiny, has all been just it's it's just been changed the whole direction and the leadership in that area and it's now an exemplary department um, our financing with Dan Cox I mean I can say that that is also one of the proudest accomplishments that the board has we've dropped our rate to 52 cents and I heard Tommy Williams speak at the audit committee legislative meet, committee meeting and said this, if this isn't the only district, it is one of a, a one or two that has the lowest tax rate implementation in the 52 cent decrease in the state of Texas. And we had an opportunity to not do that. We chose not to, but to return that money to the taxpayers. And that's another proud accomplishment. And along with the 2004 bond passage, which uh, was pretty significant coming from a 2003 year of incredible controversy. But those are a few of the highlights that I, I remember, and I, I just wanted to mention those. And really what that comes down to is the, uh, the controversies that we faced and the challenges that we faced, I've got to attribute that this is one of the best group of people that I've I've ever worked with, and I've been in a lot of challenging situations um, in community service. And at the time that I came on to the Conroe Independent School Board, it was really not it. It was something I wasn't expecting, but I was prepared for. And uh, if it hadn't been for this great board working together. Uh, to say, you know what, we're not going to concentrate on the past and we're not going to look at all of those issues. We're going to move forward, make it better, and do it for the children. I think that's what makes this, this board so exemplary and so strong. And uh, it, I can feel comfortable and I can say, okay, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm leaving the school district in such good hands because you couldn't have any better people running the school district, this school district, or any school district in the state of Texas or the nation than, than these people here. They're wonderful. They do, they put the district above themselves. 
They always have. If there's an issue between any of us, that is put aside, and we keep our children first and our, our parents and our teachers and our taxpayers. Um, now, I, I, people have asked me, why are you leaving? Well, I'm leaving for another challenge. Uh, I didn't intend to leave. I did not want to leave. I wanted to stay here. I feel like my contributions, I could still contribute. But when I chose to run for the Woodlands Township, it was a, a time in the Woodlands where the whole era of, of governance is changing. It's changing into a, uh, a city. And I'd been working on that as well for a number of years, and I felt that that was a calling that I needed to participate in. So I ran for the election, hoping that I could stay and complete my last term on the school board, but then realizing I couldn't. So I had to make the decision to step down, and that's uh, what I did. It's not an easy decision. Uh, it's with great sadness that I'm doing this, um, but I look forward to the challenge in the Woodlands, and I think it'll be almost a similar challenge that I faced in 2003 when I came on the Conroe Independent School District. It's almost starting to shape up like that now. I can just feel it. I went to a few meetings, and I went, oh, boy, here it goes again. It's a rewind. So uh, I will. Um, I, I feel comfortable in leaving, and I'm leaving for another challenge in my life. Okay, in conclusion, I'll, thank you for letting me speak. I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Mel I said, been able to stop you Mel, so yeah. I said, Mel, do I have an opportunity to speak? And he says, how am I going to stop you? You know, you're just, and they said that since I wasn't at one of the meetings, the board efficiency has gone up and, and the time is, is decreased. Um, my, uh, let me, let me, uh, end by, um, introducing my family. Um, who has been a great and tremendous support for me. I'll start with my father, uh, Colson Tuff Elementary School, right here. <laughs> Colson, uh, Colson served on the school board, and uh, every time he comes in here, he goes, I never had it this good. And, you know, he was in the old administration building, and and uh, he, I think, he served under two super or served with two superintendents, um, and uh, so you know the times have changed, but the issues are the same. Colson, I just want to tell you that. And with Colson is Ruth Grazier. Ruth, thank you for being here. Um, my, uh, I'm going to start with my children, um, Madison Tough. Madison, please stand, Madison. Uh, Madison is a sophomore at College Park High School. She's in the academy. She's a junior varsity soccer player, and uh, she is uh, exemplary. She's a wonderful student, and she's the old, the oldest, so she takes care of her other little sisters. Next is Tara. Tara Tuff. <laughs> Tara is a cheerleader at McCullough Junior High School, and uh, she was just. I guess re-selected for her next year, and she's entering eighth grade at uh, McCullough. <laughs> Abby is a third grader at Colin Powell. <laughs> now, I want to tell you, there's a legacy in our family for third graders. They have to all score commendable on their tax test. That's the history. That started with Madison and with Tara. And so I called Lisa Garrison before the meeting to check on your tax scores, and you made it. <laughs> she made commendable. And uh, our, our, my little baby, uh, Sydney Tuff, who is a kindergartner at Powell, they tell me that she has uh, set a number of records as a kindergartner and that everyone knows her, including all the teachers. So that's... Uh, <laughs> and uh, and their wonderful mother, uh, my wonderful wife, Diana Tuff, who allows me to do what I do in the community. Thank you. We, we know how much she commits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Diana, Diana has been extremely patient, very forgiving, and especially those one o'clock in the morning to twelve midnight meetings that we had. And thank God we don't have them anymore. But we had many of them, and she didn't know what I'd gotten myself into uh, during that first month. But um, I, I wanted to say, uh, in parting, that it has been truly 
truly an honor to serve as a trustee in the Conroe Independent School District. It, it is one of the greatest honors I've had in my <laughs> life. I will never forget anybody, including all the, the children and teachers and administrators and parents that I've met, and especially uh, you wonderful school board members. Thank you. And it's been an honor serving with you. You know, uh, last meeting, I uh, don't know if you know it or not, but we filled your position on the uh, Finance com uh, Audit Committee and on the Legislative Committee. The one position you're leaving vacant that we didn't uh, fill, other than your actual seat on the board, is who do I exchange friendly barbs with? <laughs> uh, no, uh, no when, you never exchange friendly ones with me. <laughs> uh, maybe I won't get in trouble as much. Uh, I remember early on, uh, we were rezoning. And you and I were, at those times, were also thinking about what we'd gotten ourselves into. And uh, we'd rezone South County. And, oh, we got emails and phone calls and everything, and uh, hundreds of them. We started rezoning up here in the north part of the county. And keep in mind, I had run on the cam my campaign on the fact that I, I wanted the north and south part of the county to get along and that we would, we would represent the entire uh, district. And... Uh, we were rezoning up here, and Bruce said, well, I didn't get very many emails on this. And I guess he thought because I lived in North County, if they were going to complain, they would complain to me. And he looked down at me and said, did you get very many mail? I said, no. He said, I wonder why. And I forgot we were being televised. And I, <laughs> and I said, Bruce, we're just nicer up here. <laughs> I did get a lot of emails after that, but they were all from the South County. <laughs> so, and we want to recognize you and give you something besides the uh, certificate, which I mean the resolution, which will be uh, signed by everybody We're waiting for signature from Linda. But I want to read this to you. Conroe Independent School District, committed to excellence, presented to Mr. Bruce Tuff in recognition for dedicated service and commitment to excellence. Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees, 2003. 2008. I want to thank Linda Sasser, by the way. Uh, we deal with a lot of controversial issues from time to time, and she didn't take those off. She took off tonight, and I got to uh, officiate uh, when we're giving out all these awards. So I, well, I want to thank her for that kindness <laughs> to me. And uh, with that, uh, Dr. Stockton, uh, item uh, three. Uh, before we go to 3H, I would like to recognize Kathy Clark. Kathy has done a great job. Excuse me. Choreographing all of the awards tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Two H is citizens' participation. Oh, I'm sorry. Two H. Okay. Uh, this is the time when we hear from citizens. Uh, Madam Board Secretary, has anyone signed up to address the board? Okay. Uh, before we uh, call them up. Uh, let me point out that the next 30 minutes on the agenda uh, this evening has been designated for public participation for patrons who signed up to address the board in accordance with <laughs> board policy BED. Keep in mind that this, this portion of the meeting is not the appropriate means for bringing complaints for which resolution is sought. Complaints must be addressed by following the appropriate policies and administrative procedures before they can be submitted to the Board of Trustees as an agenda item. Those who have registered to address the Board will be limited to no more than five minutes for their presentation. Delegates of more than five persons must appoint one representative to represent their views to the Board. Also keep in mind that we cannot deliberate or take action regarding any subject that's not posted on the agenda. But it can, we can furnish specific factual information 
or cite existing policy in response to your inquiries. Madam uh, Secretary? Stuart Schrader. That was a tough act to follow, but just a few personal thoughts. <laughs> I just want to thank Bruce Tuff, the outgoing trustee for the Board of uh, Trustees for the school district, and on behalf of the students, parents, staff, and the constituents, for your hard work and service. Your skills and hard work have truly made you an asset to this school district and to the board. And for those of us who are fortunate enough to live in the Woodlands Township, welcome aboard. And we're fortunate that you're part of our leadership team to lead us into our new <laughs> form of self-governance. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks. Now, Doc, oh, is there another one? Okay. Now, Doc Stockton, uh, item three. Item three is a consent agenda. You've had these items uh, for a while to look at, and I will submit that to you for a second. Mm -hmm. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, uh, item uh, four, curriculum and instruction, Dr. Stockton. If I, um, may I um, ask the board to allow me to move human resources report up to this moment? I have no, I have no objection. <laughs> okay, I'd like to move the human resources report up. And item number 9A is the naming uh, of the principal uh, for Bush elementary school. Um, as you know, and I've shared with you before, that uh, the recommendation of the principal is the most important thing that I do, because the principals are the ones that work with the campuses on a, on a daily basis. They, they recommend the hiring of the wonderful teachers that we have. Um, so I take it with, with great seriousness um, when I make a recommendation for a principal, and at this time, I'd like to recommend uh, to you that we name Judy Mills uh, the principal of Bush Elementary School. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Can I? Can we also get Mr. Tuff's uh, raising of his hand? Uh, Mr. So Tuff, are you raising your hand? Okay. Well, are you waving goodbye or voting? <laughs> okay. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Could we get her to come and... Judy, if you'll come up and address the press. <laughs> I'm thrilled and deeply honored that you have selected me to fill that position as the new principal at Barbara Bush Elementary. I've actually been there since the opening of Bush in 1996. Last year we celebrated a decade of excellence um, with the former First Lady Barbara Bush attending a celebration that we had there at the school. Most recently we were privileged to have our current First Lady, Laura Bush and her daughter Jenna, uh, visit our school and read their most recent book to some of our students. Um, for the past 12 years, um, we have seen changes. We have seen students come and go. Um, we have seen changes in curriculum, assessment. But one thing that has never, ever changed at Barbara Bush Elementary is our mission, and that is to provide an excellent education for all students. Although I have big shoes to fill following two great leaders, first Becky Holland and then, of course, Nancy Sparks, as principal, I plan to continue and build upon the traditions that have been established and the excellent program that has already been established at Bush. I would like to thank Dr. Stockton and you, the board members, for allowing me to fill that position as principal at Barbara Bush Elementary. I would also like to thank the Bush staff, <laughs> and my friends for their words of kindness and support in waiting for the new principal to be named. And last but not least, I would like to thank my family, 
I would like to thank them for believing in me and their support in my endeavor to uh, to pursue this position. I'd like to introduce my husband, James, and my daughter, Jamie. Once again, thank you very much. We would like to shake your hand, too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Stockton, if we'll finish the human resources section with uh, B. I'd like to recommend that you approve the human resources report as amended that's in front of you. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Okay, those opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay, now back to item four, curriculum and instruction, Dr. Stockton. Great, item 4A is uh, the Science and Laboratory Grant Program Approval. Mrs. Drummond. Good evening, Mr. Br uh, Dr. Brown, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. House Bill 2237 created the Science Laboratory Grant Program to provide <laughs> competitive grants to school districts for the purpose of constructing or renovating high school science laboratories where the existing district labs are insufficient in number to comply with the curriculum requirements imposed for the recommended and advanced high school programs. <laughs> we are applying for the grant to fund the construction of a new addition at the Woodlands College Park High School. The formula indicates that we qualify to apply for the funding of three 1,400 square foot science laboratories at $200 per square foot. The amount of that grant is $840,000. And just so you know how this um, works, we, we actually investigated trying to get funding to pay for the science laboratories at Conroe High School, but they didn't fall in the timeline of the grant. <coughs> so we have uh, mentioned that to our legislators that we didn't think that was Fair. But anyway, we're, we are applying. The order um, of the grants, the TEA will order them according to property wealth per student in average daily attendance. And they will begin with the lowest property <laughs> wealth and then continue until all the money is distributed. So we may not um, be in the money, but we may. So we decided we might as well try for it. So what we would like for you to do uh, this evening is to approve our move forward to uh, continue with this application for the I'm grant. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, well, I'm going to have to ask my usual questions. Okay. Uh, is there any required match? No. Okay, there is none. Okay, yes. and you answered the other one when you uh, during your discussion. So thank you. John, did I hear you, Ms. Tusman? That was my question. Okay. Okay. And just for clarity, we're going to build the science rooms. For <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any discussion? All right. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Those opposed, like saying. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Stockton, 4B. 4B is a preliminary tax results for fifth and eighth grade mathematics. <laughs> Mrs. Gibson and, oh, sorry, Dr. Gibson and Mrs. Drummond. Okay. Um, Dr. Brown, board members, and Dr. Stockton, this evening we'd like to present to you the preliminary math tax uh, scores. Uh, this is the first opportunity that our students have to take the tax math assessment. And in keeping with our uh, past successes, you can see that um, in 2008 we have outperformed the state with our students in grade five taking the English tax assessment with a 91% met standard. 
Now remember that they took the second, those that had to take the second try, retested on May 13th, and we should receive those scores back by June 2nd. And uh, Mr. Tuff, you asked us five years ago to concentrate on our bilingual ESL program, and uh, we present to you again this evening, uh, this is the least amount of students we've ever tested in grade five Spanish tax. This only represents 28 students. Uh, it is seven less students than last year this time, and um, we are continuing to make progress in this area. And uh, Bruce, um, you've always held us to a very high standard, and we appreciate that, and you know I will miss you. Thank you, and I'm going to miss you. In grade five, our English and Spanish students combined, our, our uh, overall uh, performance for Conroe, 90%, which we have clearly outperformed the state. And you can see that four-year trend there and that the state <laughs> is somewhat flat, uh, and we continue to perform strongly. So great success for all of our students and teachers throughout our fifth grade classrooms. Good evening, Dr. Brown, uh, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. Uh, we also are thrilled oh, hold about on our math. I'm sorry. Do you have a question? He can wait. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. We are thrilled about our scores in math in our eighth grade. This is the first year for our eighth graders to be under Student Success Initiative. Um, we have outperformed the state since 2004. The one thing I will point out is in 2007, our 83% was our final percentage. Our 85% this year is based on our first test. So we anticipate that that's, that percentage will go up after the second Score test. Score tries total, though? Or are only two that count in the number? Two count in the number. Thank you. The students will have their third shot at the test if they don't pass this uh, July. But it doesn't count in the final No, it does not. So we only we get two shots, but we're ahead of the game already. Uh, this year. So we're very, very proud of our students and our teachers in the eighth grade. Um, many initiatives were taking place this year, and that's very obvious from the score. So we're very pleased to uh, share those with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Uh, Dr. Stockton, I believe you had requested that we move legal up uh, now. Yes, um, if we could move the legal section up prior to administration, okay, it makes a little so, more sense to do it that Okay, way. why don't we uh, start with uh, item 10A then. 10A, uh, Ms. Gladys, is the approval of the interlocal agreement for joint use of facilities. Thank you, Dr. Stock. <coughs> Dr. Brown, members of the board, we are requesting your approval of an interlocal agreement with the City of Conroe for joint use of several of our schools, um, Houston, Anderson, Runyon, Travis, Washington, Armstrong, this agreement arose out of um, the concern over the ending of the 21st century grant that's provided after school programming at these campuses. Um, we uh, worked with the city of Conroe. They're going, they're wanting to provide after school uh, programming for the students, similar to what the YMCA does in many of our other schools. It'll be from after school until about six o'clock when parents can pick them up at an affordable rate for parents. And so if you're able to share facilities uh, and provide them facilities at no cost, they will be able to provide that programming to, similar to the Y uh, to the families of these particular schools. So we request your approval of this interlocal agreement. Do I hear a motion? Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Any questions? Yes, I just have one question. Are they, uh, we, uh, and it may be directed towards Dr. Stockton, um, we will not be using the city pool in any way whatsoever next year for the swim teams, correct? That is correct. Everybody's looking at Sam. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's a, it, yes, that's correct. Do we have any other land usage agreements with the city of Conroe for our schools or for their properties? Well, I, I've written the appeal to like to say that we'll be getting top of the tower I, usage. With that exception, okay. I'm talking about preliminary prior to this. Do we spend any money for sit use of city properties, or do they spend any money for use of our properties, independent of this agreement right here, right now? Uh, nothing comes to my mind. But with the exception the of the swimming pool, <laughs> but not they, next year. We also have playground, future playgrounds in the agreement um, to credit the city for putting future playgrounds in our elementary schools. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Is that? That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I have, uh, any other discussion? Do I hear a motion? Oh, wait, I had a motion. Pardon me. Uh, 
Uh, all those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Okay, motion uh, passes. Uh, item uh, 10B. 10B is the approval of engagement agreement with RBC Capital Markets. Ms. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. As you know, we just passed a bond election, and with that will come the sale of bonds probably even tonight. Um, and, in, and in that regard, we need to have an agreement um, with our financial advisor. We renew it at the conclusion of every um, bond say, or election that we've had, and this just sets out the terms we believe are very favorable. We, uh, Mr. Cox, worked with them, and we are pleased with the terms of this agreement and ask that you approve. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Or raise your hand. Opposed? Whoop. I, I was in favor. Okay, you're, you're just slow down there tonight. Huh? Okay, uh, motion passes. Uh, item 10C. Uh, 10C is stormwater <laughs> detention and easement agreement, Ms. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. As you know, we are uh, purchasing a piece of property on which to build a new junior high in the Cotter Feeder. Um, part of that agreement, uh, we will have the detention facility on our property that will serve our site as well as a subdivision that is lo located there close to, and so this easement grants them access to that so moved. facility. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Uh, Dr. Stockton, 10D. I'm going to pull 10D <laughs> off the agenda. That contract is not ready. Okay. Uh, then let's move to 10E. 10E is the approval uh, order canvassing returns and declaring results of election for the May 10, 2008 bond referendum. Mrs. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Dr. Brown, at this point I would ask that you nominate two members of the board to canvass the election returns of the bond election, and we will excuse ourselves to the board <laughs> to any results and then hopefully bring back a recommendation okay. regarding that. Well, let's get something out of uh, Bruce before he leaves. Bad. I'm good at that, too. Okay. I'm good at counting. Yes. Dr. Brown, I, I propose that uh, uh, Mr. Tuff and Mr. Irons canvass the election. You must be reading my mind out here. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you two gentlemen take care of that? Yeah. Okay, if you would. You'll follow Mr. Gladys. <laughs> and we'll just wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, it should be announced. The Uh, so that you won't be bored, those of you who do not know, John Husband is celebrating a birthday, and there's cake and punch in the back. Yeah. So why don't you partake of that while we wait for the canvassing of the vote? Sounds like a great idea. We get cake. Although, I get coffee. Okay. Well, this will give them time to move. Don't go, don't go far. Yeah. Board members do not go far. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think this was a test. I, I'm sorry. You, you, you lose the, the, you lose the, 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 the we'll, um, he, he will give us a report. You're going to let him speak to yes. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Um, Mr. Tuff. Well, first of all, I want to, um, Gerald and I were actually working, and we were canvassing back there, so I think some interesting statistics that you need to know is that there are 130,733 registered voters in our school district. There were a total ballots cast of 11,117, and the election day ballots were more than the early ballots. The early ballots were 4,747, and the election day were 6,370. And so the numbers are actually come down less than what the ballots cast. So someone, some people who are voting chose not to vote in this election. So that's interesting that Gerald and I thought we'd point out. But the four uh, ballots from our canvassing of all the precincts that were presented were 6,309 against were 4,128 for a total of ballots cast, or total of, that were ballots cast for the election were 10,000. So, uh, Mr. President, I have a motion. Okay. The May 10th, 2008 schoolhouse bond election results, having been canvassed by a quorum of the board, <laughs> I move that the Board of Trustees approve the order canvassing the election returns and declare the results of the election to be 6,309 votes for, 
and 4,128 votes against. Second. Okay, I have a motion, a second, any discussion? <laughs> all right, those, all those in favor, say aye. i raise your hand. Okay, none opposed, evidently, since everybody voted aye. Motion carries. Okay, let me see if I can figure out where we are after jumping around. I think we're in administration now. Uh, five, uh, five, eight. And thank you, Mr. Arms and Mr. Tuff, for doing that for us. Okay, uh, item 5A, approval of GMP for the site clearing. Okay, Mr. Burns, please. Dr. Brown, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. We're asking the board to approve the GMP as submitted by Duratech Incorporated in the amount of $2,394,662. Uh, the scope of this project will provide the clearing of approximately 65 acres for both Flex 12 and 14. There are building pads, stormwater infrastructure, and the detention for the entire 106 acre, 106 acre site. Uh, this was actually part of the 208, 2008 bond referendum. Okay, and for clarification purposes, this is part of the 186 acres, correct? Yes, 65 okay. of the 186, but we're doing the detention pond and infrastructure for the entire 186. Okay, okay. Okay. So Sir, moved. Okay, second. have a motion. Did I hear a second? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Raise your hand. Opposed? Okay. Uh, item uh, 5B, approval of GMP for site clearing flex 13. Ms. Dr. Burns. Stockton. Uh, again, we're asking the board uh, to approve the uh, GMP submitted by Durotech for the price of $538,032. Uh, this will be to clear uh, approximately 15 acres for the new uh, Flex 13 site, which will include the building pad and stormwater infrastructure. This, again, is part of the 2008 bond referendum. And this is Imperial Oaks, correct? That is correct. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Sleep. Okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. Uh, Dr. Stockton? Item 5C. Is GMP for mm -hmm. Wilkinson Corridor Tower placement, Mr. Burns? Uh, we're asking the board to, to approve the GMP as submitted by Ellisor Constructors in the amount of $219,476. This is to replace the existing uh, carpet in the all the corridors and base with a ceramic tile, which the board has approved several years ago we start going with. Uh, this is part of the 2008 bond referendum. So moved. Second. I have, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Dr. Stockton, 5D. 5D is the design development for Conroe High, the high, Conroe High School renovations, Mr. Burns. Uh, we're asking the board to approve the design development of the new Conroe High uh, project. Uh, we're asking uh, Mr. Ian Powell of PBK Architects to submit the uh, presentation, and if he would introduce his uh, colleagues. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Good evening, folks. Uh, good evening, Dr. Brown, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. It's with great pleasure that we're here to bring to you one of the first pieces of the uh, of the 2008 bond. But I'd like to say at the beginning, it's sort of a daunting prospect to come up here and present to you on a night that's been filled with so many champions, national finalists, luminaries, and dignitaries. So, it's, but it's also <laughs> gratifying as a resident within the district to see those kind of achievements and accomplishments occurring in Conroe ISD. So. Our hats are off to you. Thank you. Having said that, the uh, uh, at hand, what we have at hand uh, for to present to you um, <coughs> is one of eight projects which have uh, delivery dates brought to you from your 2008 bond, which uh, need to be presented to you very very quickly in order to achieve the delivery dates for the projects. And this one is a little different than some of the other ones that have been brought to you in the past. As you know, in the facility planning committee, uh, that group endorsed and presented to you as a board. Uh, campus improvements on almost every single one of your campuses. And so one of the components, of course, was Conroe High School, and within the 56 work tasks and items that were brought to you by teachers, by, by, um, by faculty, by staff, by administrators to do, there were a couple of components that had the potential to change the appearance of the building. And we knew it absolutely was not right to take action, move forward with those things until we would present it to you for to ask your pleasure and how to proceed. So having set the stage, hopefully, for this presentation, we have 
presentation that we'll shortly show. Frame of context. This is the aerial showing the existing conditions and the campus for Conroe High School. Contained within the 56 work tasks that were to occur as part of the campus improvements is our two new additions. The first component being a main entry and reconfiguring of the administrative area to provide a more secure vestibule and, and lock area, much like you've done on many of your other campuses. At the same time, there was a second component that involved the installation or the construction of a concession stand area that would allow the mezzanine level for both of the gymnasiums on this campus to be linked at one level so that they were not physically separate and so that you didn't have to exit the building to go back to the other gymnasium. And so in looking at this, we realized that there was an opportunity to do many things. This is a quick blow up of the administrative area showing a reconfiguration of the security uh, vestibule or the entry vestibule and reconfiguring the reception, the principal's office, the assistant principal's office, bookkeeper, and, um, and working space as part of that. This is a floor plan showing the concession stand addition on the front of the two gymnasiums and it allows the mezzanine to be linked from the right hand, the viewer's right hand side existing gymnasium to the viewer's left hand side with a common lobby and a common concession that will support both and generate new entrances into that addition. Get back up just a minute. Yes, Where sir. is the existing concession stand in the, the pit? I believe the space that if you if you see on the viewer's left hand side where it says existing gymnasium, just above that there are some rooms. Right to I the believe... left of the word lobby. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a static rendering showing the overall campus. Would you? Yeah. Would you go back to that too? Certainly. That has that that is not the, that's mm -hmm. existing campus with the suggested renovation in front. If you'll notice the curvature of the front entryway. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is a close-up showing the proposed elevation along this building. It's an interesting structure when you consider that you have pieces of this building which are vintage 1960s, and I think, if memory serves me, even earlier than that, and then you have some as recent as 2008. There's almost a thousand feet of building front <coughs> occurring along 105 for Conroe High School. With that new addition up here, what would the space accommodations be up top? None. Yeah. The, the purpose for that is to, and thank you for the segue, on a thousand linear feet of building, as you pass it either in a, in, in a car or as you walk up to it, there can be some concern. We have concerns uh, on your behalf about how do you, how does a newcomer to the campus, a guest to the campus, realize in an instant, where's the front door? There are, there are other planning um, studies, uh, data, which support that even from a security standpoint, one acronym being the uh, crime prevention through environmental design, they say one of the things you do for a campus to make it more secure is provide a strong a sense of entry and a place of entry. So you have that wayfinding component is done for you and at a glance as people come to your campus. So these will be openings, these, these, these openings will be not glass or just be? The, the openings shown above, I believe, are glass and they open up into an area uh, up above the entry space. Okay. This is a view looking at it from the other direction. Okay. So, but will there be offices or rooms of something? Like that? Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, no, 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 sir. There are no physical spaces up top that allows light to come into that entry space. It's just a not a level. This is the new it, wing. It's, it's, okay. it's actually a fairly shallow oh, okay. addition okay. simply it's because there's not a lot of depth between your driveway right now and the down. front door no. to the campus. <laughs> so that's just an exterior okay. facade. That's it is. Sir. Now, it, it does do this. Yeah, I know, but they pulled it out. It does allow for the opportunity to push your entrance further out. So where the storefront doors that you enter right now, they're actually about eight feet further out so that you can build that vestibule. Okay. And it does the same thing for building a reception space, which presently doesn't exist okay. in that area. Okay. For the question. security. For the security in yes, sir. We had a question. It doesn't move the front entrance in either direction. still the same place. It just brings it out. Absolutely correct. It doesn't move the entrance laterally, left or right, so the person who knows where to go now We'll know again where to go. It's the same alignment. But that, that enhances the security of the entrance. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And, and it also uh, segues, <laughs> it segues nicely with the uh, additional for the uh, library on the left there. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, we were, you know, again, the challenge was you have a building that has components from as early as even predating 1960s all the way to 2008. At the same time, at least from our point of view, there were elements that didn't quite coexist as nicely. And so when you, when you view the front door and you view the concession area, it seemed like there was a great opportunity since we were doing two things that you had sort of locked into the campus improvements for this campus to, and we asked permission. We said, may we do some sketching for you? And um, with uh, let me jump in. <laughs> we, uh, we challenged them that library is it's beautiful, yeah. your library, and with our the LGI to the left. But, but that's the the uh, signature of that building to use that architecture throughout the length of the building. Yeah. And when they say they came up with a few sketches, they're under they're under reporting the number of sketches <laughs> that came up. They're, they've been wonderful to work with. Uh, and it also dovetails nicely here to the right. The, Brown part of them. Well, thank you for your comments, Dr. Stockton. Thank you also, uh, Mr. Irons, for that as well. And, you know, I, I firmly believe this. It's so hard to present to you something that is a static two-dimensional <laughs> representation. And so if I've come to the right segue for the next piece of this, there is an animation that we would like to show you. You just show him off. Eh? <laughs> and hopefully it will be to your liking. And this represents what we think the front of the school might look like if this is what you choose to proceed with. It really ties those gems in nice, doesn't it? And notice that's a covered that's walkway. A walkway. Yeah. Between it's a covered walkway. Yeah, that's really that's nice. That's a good thing. Gymnasium. It gives the appearance that it was possibly built at the same time. But we, then in, uh, thank you so much for that comment. <laughs> Here, here's a good view of it. <coughs> I like it. Very nice. And it has an, an unusual uh, okay. architecture there. There you go. Yeah, that's you good. don't find that's another oh, kind. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Does that mean it's equal to uh, We're not done? No, this is it. Oh, that's perfect. That's nice. Mr. Powell? Sir. See? Thank you for the show. Well, thank, thank you very you much for letting us bring this to you. And let me just comment. Uh, first of all, let me just say it's beautiful. I mean, I've known Conroe High School a long time the way it is, and uh, and I I really think it looks great. <laughs> I have but one concern. Yes, sir. Okay. And that is the outside walkway. Okay. We're building the entryway. We're renovating for security purposes several schools. Okay. Right now, I'm not saying students don't get in the front parking lot on a daily basis during school hours for whatever reason. And they're out there for, you know, parent pickup or whatever the situation is. But I am concerned, not overly so, but I, I am a bit concerned about having that outside walkway as a regular access between the gymnasiums as opposed to right now the students go through the interior of the building, good, bad, or indifferent. And I, of course, have not spoken with Mr. Crowell about this, but I would have a question of he and his APs about the, right now, Basically, from the front doors back, Conroe High School goes backwards. It's not a closed campus. I won't say that word, but it goes backwards, okay? And they already have the issues of the of the road and the buildings out the backside, okay? I just have a concern with students on the 105 side having an outside access. I'm not sure if it's a valid concern, but... It's a concern. I'm going to exercise the chair's prerogative. Mr. Crowell's here. Mr. Crowell, would you like to say make any comments about that? I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I'm sorry. Who? Come, come to the mic, I, Mr. Crowell. I get an old and can hardly hear. Mr. Husband had asked me about that before the meeting, and I told him that I'd take it back to my APs to see if they saw any concern with it. You know, I, it looks beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it, it'll cover us up in the rain. I, I don't know if any more are going to go there, but I, I will ask and see if anybody on my staff sees a concern with it. 
you know, my guess, knowing Conrad a little bit, and just off the top of my head here, I'm not sure if the traffic flow of the students comes to the front of the building, except for after school yeah. or, or. But Dr. Stockton, it most certainly will now that you're connecting those gymnasiums with a covered walkway. No, that, you know that, what I'm saying? No, the gymnasiums well, sure. go inside. Yeah. They can connect inside. No, no, they don't. You can't connect to the rest of the school except how you can right now. You, they connect to each other, but it does not run a parallel inside walkway inside the school. My, my point, though, is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, if the students are in PE or athletics, they're not in the gyms. They, they retreat back into the locker rooms, which actually in that main corridor. So I don't know. I, mean, I don't know that it will either. I don't I, know if they'll come out through the gym, go around, and then come because the classes are set back. My guess would be you won't see much traffic during the school day. That's my guess, Mr. Powell. You know the building better than I do. And, and that's where we are right now. But, again, I'm on, I'm willing to go back and talk to my staff to see if they see anything. I, I personally, I, I don't I, I don't. I'm like you, it, we're coming out of the locker rooms in the flow <coughs> because a lot of the flow out of there is back, out back doors going over to the other buildings. Even now with another building over there, the Bain Acquire, that's another reason to flow backwards. Would it be fair to suggest that if there were to, or if there was to be an issue that you'd administratively handle the traffic I think it'd be simple to put an administrator out there to watch that flow. Dr. Hines, do you have something? I think one of the challenges is that so many people high school super difficult challenge. One option that remains not a real needed thoroughfare to close that off so that that's not an option no right. you don't go outside right, that was my comment you'd have to come back into your to, because supervision is reality of how many places can we be so yeah. that doesn't become an option just closing that and off that and, and that's simply done by who's ever teaching the pe class <laughs> is one of them is posted at that door say no you got to go through the inside route that's Best solution right there which could take care of that real easy I certainly like the fact that the way it looks number one and number two the way you know it provides uh, covered waiting time for parental, parental pickup for whoever picking up in front of the school the way they do and so by no means am I I, I don't want you to take it wrong that I'm questioning <laughs> whether it's a beautiful layout I just uh, you know, 105 is a different street than Wilson, and oh, yeah. we're fortunate enough to have Wilson under control right now. But, uh, you know, when you're building an entrance and you're moving the front office around for security purposes, it seems defeating to have the kids out in front of that area. <laughs> is, that, is that, I mean, I can see that. I'm not sure it's a real concern, but I just thought it worthy of mentioning. And if it's, if we need to table it and allow Mr. Rill, I don't know what that would do to our time schedule. Yeah, if it'll wreck it, but, but, uh, you know, yeah, I, offer I, I understand that. that. Mr. Hunter, <laughs> I think with what Dr. Hines' suggestion, I think we can handle it. Okay. And Are I'll you? offer the comment in direct response to yours, sir, and that is that you've got, you can make any choice you want. Um, if it's best for the campus and the administration and the purpose of the school to not have that, you know, it, it serves a visual purpose, but our true first function was to try and link the front doors of the concession to the front doors of the um, of the main entry by a continuation of a walkway which is presently already there on the back side of the auditorium and then provide some measure of weather cover. But having said that, there's no functional reason other than that that, that insists on it. I'll say this, it seems like you have at least three options. One be, would be to say, that's not necessary. We can accomplish what we need without that. That's your pleasure. The other is to say, no, that works, that's fine. And the third, if, this, if the desire were to seek another internal mechanism, that was inside the building, you could potentially enclose that quarter. I don't have a concern if our administration doesn't have a concern. Very good. I, I thought it worthy of noting sure. and not trying to disrupt the, the program, but uh, if, if Mike's comfortable, if Dr. Stockton's comfortable, I'm comfortable. Okay. Thank, you. Okay. Thank you for the comments. Okay. With, your, with your permission, may I offer an introduction of some of the folks that have been you working on this project? I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Steve Santos, project manager with PBK. Mr. Greg Louvier, 
who was the designer that uh, worked on those few sketches that we were able to accomplish for you, and Ms. Kristen Rinker, who is also in our design department. And they represent just a lot, of, a few of the many people at PBK that have been involved on this project and others. But the truth is, I almost contribute nothing to that team. These are the people that really do what I get to talk about in front of you. So thank you very much. Do, do we, we need a motion? Yes. So moved. Move. Got a motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Yeah, okay. Right there. Okay. Okay, motion carries. Uh, now we are down to the bond referendum update, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Burns. Okay. Uh, Conroe High School Additions and Renovations is about 95 to 97% complete. Um, and we're down to the real finish here. This is the uh, one of the main cars uh, upstairs. Uh, this is the uh, the existing, to the right back, is the back existing up building. Minute, Mr. Burns, back uh, up just a second. Okay. Thought I saw the, the bathrooms outside. Oh, we've always we started doing that in the yes. younger grades. And anyway, uh, the wall on the right uh, used to be the existing uh, building, uh, north side of the building. Uh, this is one of the new science prep rooms, science uh, classroom. Uh, this is the new LGI uh, finishing up. Uh, York Junior High. It's about 83 to 88% complete. This is the commons area. Uh, the bus loading. This is one of the science classrooms. Science prep room. Typical classroom. Oh, this is the commons area. Interior shot. Uh, sure, it's not the library. Uh, yes, it, I'm sorry. Right, you're right. Um, Football field. A uh, Tom Cox Senior Intermediate. It's also about 83 to 87 percent complete. It's going to clean up very well. New front entrance with a second set of security doors. Uh, this is the commons area. Restrooms. Uh, the library uh, waiting for the uh, casework to, to arrive. Installation. The sports complex is now about um, 92, 96 percent complete. The front entry to the natatorium. This is in, uh, inside the natatorium looking out toward the parking lot. This is the reception area of the natatorium. Uh, the, the coping showed up uh, at <clears throat> the beginning of the week is now uh, being set. Uh, they still anticipate having water in by August 1st. Just the shots of the home side of the stadium. Now, the new scoreboard was wrecked last week. Let me also point out the scoreboard was, was uh, no taxpayers' dollars used for the scoreboard. We've sold advertising. Our sponsors are very excited to be on the scoreboard. How many were sold and um, how many are left available? The football scoreboard was sold out. <laughs> and, and how many would, they, would it accommodate in terms um, of... Uh, Advertise. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boards on each scoreboard. And there were two scoreboards? Yes. Okay. One at one at Wood Forest Bank Stadium, one at Moorhead Stadium. They're identical. Um, and then in the natatorium, we have um, on the video board um, sold that out. And, and that has one, two, three, four, five, six sponsors on the results board. We have two slots left. And that also has six sponsors. So the, the sales of those are extremely well. Are the is everybody in the administration aware that uh, the natatorium has attracted uh, uh, some <laughs> swim meets that the University of Houston, Houston used to get? We, we have done, uh, uh, we've had great success. Uh, Sam Frujillo is in the back there. It's great success um, with the interest from other uh, groups and competitions to come to the natatorium. And um, at some point we'll have a completed report to give you, but it's going extremely well. I'm sorry, Mr. Burns. No, no problem. <clears throat> oh, this is the concession uh, area of the uh, home sign. 
This is some shots from the stadium toward looking overlooking the natatorium toward the kind of like a southeast more of the center portion of the field. Uh, this is one of the locker rooms. Looking back toward the natatorium. Armstrong Elementary is about 70% complete. You can, if you go back, you can start to see the shape of the building now. This is the library, exterior of it. Uh, this is the interior of framework and sheetrock going on. Uh, by the way, the interior classrooms uh, have all been bed painted and, and ceiling tile or ceiling grid is going in. The custodial maintenance and central warehouse and transportation. <clears throat> this is the transportation building. It's about oh eighty five percent, so about eighty five percent complete. This is the interior of the uh, transportation facility. This is the maintenance uh, warehouse loading dock. Another shot. This is the back side, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Any well, questions? I, I have a question. When did you start doing the bond referendum reports? First year you started doing them. <laughs> 03, I think. So three. What are we going to do with that? <laughs> well, I'm just saying. That's... <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to ask Bobby. I asked Thank Bobby his first, first, okay. his first bond referendum report okay. meeting. I think I'm going to let him Okay. Uh, Item six. I'm sorry. We skipped around with that. I apologize, okay. Dr. Brown. Okay. Well, I, I was thinking that uh, we're getting ready to do something else up there before. Item six A uh, tentative schedule of events for sales. Series 2008, Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mr. Cox, I'll call on you at this point to introduce that item. Dr. Brown, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I recommend that the Board of Trustees approve a tentative schedule of events for the sale of fixed rate Series 2008 school bonds and appoint the financing team for the bond sale. So moved. <laughs> Second. The, we're going to be selling... Uh, 85 million of 2000 from the 2008 bond <laughs> referendum. I would like to point out that this includes about 2.6 million for buses and technology. Uh, that 2.6 million will be paid off in less than seven years based on the preliminary uh, plan for the bonds. Uh, so I feel that's one of the things we wanted to make sure that we took care of. Uh, in addition to RBC Capital Markets, uh, the district's recommended finance team is presented here, uh, as you can see on the list. Uh, Mr. Frank Ildebrando and Mr. Ryan O'Hare are here this evening uh, <clears throat> to present some information on the bond sale and answer any questions that you might have. Okay. So I'd like to turn it over to Ryan O'Hare. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Dr. Stockton, members of the board, Ryan O'Hare. Frank Ildebrando is out there in the audience. Uh, we've prepared a brief presentation to kind of go over the uh, First installment for the uh, 2008 uh, bond referendum. First, so congratulations on a successful sale, and uh, we appreciate your vote of confidence in approving our agreement earlier tonight. Uh, page one, what we like to do is uh, always give you an update on the bond market. Uh, this is the, the BBI index of 20 municipal bonds. It's uh, published, uh, it's a weekly index through the bond buyer uh, newspaper. Right now, we're at a 453. Probably a more meaningful graph is what we've been experienced here in recent months. Uh, page two uh, looks at the bond buyer. It goes back to November 1 of 2007. Uh, if you look, we've seen a lot of volatility this year. The, uh, if you've opened up the Wall Street Journal, you've seen a lot of volatility in the markets this year. It's primarily due to the subprime uh, market uh, that we've been looking at. And uh, if you look mid-January, uh, we were down at a 415 on the bond buyer index. It's, that's within uh, 10 basis points of all-time lows. But by the time of the end of February, uh, we got up to a 5.11, so basically a 1% or 100 basis point move in the market over a brief period of time in our in our market. Uh, we've since stabilized. We've been in the 460 range for five weeks. We just now got down to the 453 range, so we think going into this election year cycle that we're going to see some stability. The, the Fed has moved rather quickly uh, in that regard, so we think the interest rate environment is going to be very good for our upcoming sell. Uh, page three is... Uh, let me get there. What do I need to hit? There we go. Uh, this is a lot of numbers here. This is the basically the left-hand side of the screen is the current uh, bond indebtedness for the district. Uh, middle section there is we are also, uh, along with this issuance of the new money uh, from the recent authorization, 
We do have the uh, <laughs> ability to refinance uh, some maturities, about $12 million of maturities from your 1998 issue. Uh, we've been precluded from doing these prior because of tax law, but right now these bonds are currently callable, so we can go ahead and include them into the transaction. And you'll see that the yellow column uh, in savings there, we're going to actually generate about $865,000 in savings off of refinancing about $12 million in bonds. We're going to try and structure that savings in fiscal years 2010 in order to give, give us the maximum impact on the debt service tax rate relief in that year. So we're going to concentrate the savings there. Uh, the columns next to that are the proposed structure for the $85 million that Mr. Cox was referring to and the interest portion. In this, in this analysis, we're assuming uh, interest at, at 5%. We expect to be much below that when we go to sell. Uh, page 4 is simply the schedule of events we're adhering to. Uh, we are going to start submitting our applications for the permanent school fund guarantee into this month. We'll have to wait here back from the TEA the first two weeks of the month, but we'll be here uh, for your June uh, 17th meeting uh, to offer up the actual rates that night. And uh, uh, I think the market's going to be looking good for us, but I'll open up and entertain any questions you might have for us at this time. Um, Ms. Trustman, is your motion still good? Yes, sir. Uh, the same or second? Better. Okay. Uh, any questions? What's the amount of the bonds that are being sold again? I'm sure it's here somewhere. Eighty-five million. Eighty-five. Uh, yeah. That's in the new money portion. Now, this, this is approximately one half of the first year uh, bond oh. needs, uh, but we split it into two sales. We expect to do another sale of approximately the same size in January, or February, uh, to fund our first year needs. The reason we cut it in half was to uh, manage our, t our debt service. It was uh, going to have <coughs> too, too big an initial impact, so we needed to spread, split that up. What if all the rates go up during that time? Oops. What happens then? Well, uh, long term, we'll pay more interest. <laughs> uh, of course, they might go down, too. They're headed okay. down. So, uh, But I will tell you that if we were to sell all of it now, we would experience an immediate bigger tax impact than we're going to experience. Thank you all for your help and your wisdom. Yeah. Any other questions? I just, uh, Mr. Cox, all the buses that we're buying, will they are all air conditioned? Yes. Okay. All, all all air since air. for the last few years, okay. that's Fine. become a standard now. Okay. Any other discussion, questions? If not, have a motion and a second. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Thank you all. We'll see you okay. tomorrow. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dr. Stockton, item 6B. 6B is our financial report. Mr. Bryce, <laughs> making his way to the podium. Thanks, Darren. Dr. Stockton, Dr. Brown, since we do uh, such a good job of doing all our homework, why don't we give Mr. Rice the night off? It's your oh, project. So oh, I, know it's, I know it's information. Okay, <laughs> it's information. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Rice, for your effort. Thank you for <laughs> staying and I, I, being Dr. prepared. I, I can't believe that you're going to get. They're saving you from Mr. Tuff. And I have studied so hard. I had all these questions. Okay. For you. Uh, uh, item uh, seven is executive session, so a closed session of the board will be held on matters contained in the notice of this meeting, as authorized by section 551.072, 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter <laughs> considered in such closed session or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting or at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. It is uh, 750. Six. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those who no oppose, their stay. Hand. You got to raise your hand. Those who oppose, stay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but we are allowing you to hand out diplomas, correct? Yes. We ha we have to. There's you precedent have to for that, Doctor. Yeah. Uh, Hoffman did that after he. 
So you're going to be just like Job? Is that what you're saying? Hmm? You're going to be just like Job? Is that what I'm going to hang around. <laughs> I'm not leaving. I'm just hanging around. Everyone, I'm Harry. thinking of it. I won't be there at graduation. Okay. So I'm oh, running out in California. We're in California. Great we're in California so yeah. Yeah, we just uh, happened to be going to the 50 yes. greatest Raiders. Uh -huh. <laughs>